that uh, we don't think are fair or uh, some conditions that we don't think we should be experiencing. And sometimes we don't get an answer from God. We don't know why. But, you know, sometimes the, the, there's the simple reason is just God wants you to go through it to help someone who will go through it as well. And uh, maybe that's the only reason why uh, you experience some of the things that you experience that you don't understand. That is a, a great message and I uh, just was reminded of those principles from the Word of God while listening to the song. Uh, I also, just like our pastor, what he said uh, during, uh, please bear with me because I'm nervous so I will uh, speak for, uh, before I preach. I will just uh, uh, jibber jabber. And <laughs> no, I mean, uh, pastor, he, um, we are not used to having, uh, not having missionaries come over and you know present their ministry and uh, we help them you know we don't help them uh, for selfish reasons we do that because we want to be a blessing to them I like the illustration of our pastor that you know if they need some motorcycle they can buy with the money and I think I in a sense I'm also a missionary <laughs> right amen amen praise the Lord uh, I was really encouraged I got so excited to preach when I heard that uh, praise the Lord, Paul. And uh, just remembering our previous anniversaries, um, I, rem I don't know if, it's, uh, if I remember it correctly, Brother Cedric said he was saved on an anniversary. If you uh, look at our, the previous two weeks, we see our, if you frequently go to Facebook memories, you see our uh, memories, anniversary memories there. As I say, month lang nakita natin. And so much has have changed. But we, we see the people uh, who have been here for a long time, like, of course, my, fam me, uh, my family, uh, the preachers, uh, Cedric. Uh, in that picture, if you remember that picture that we just posted, uh, Cedric changed a lot. You see, his, uh, the size of his necktie is just like a, like a t-shirt as well. <laughs> but now, uh, uh, don't small him, you know. <laughs> You are already very blessed if he will reply uh, to you on Facebook. He's a very busy man. I think he's almost the mayor of Phnom Penh. <laughs> so uh, let's pray for him. Change, uh, but the Lord uh, has blessed him, uh, of course, with his family now. Dati away lang sila ng away niya ni Mili. But, you know, away pa rin sila ng away. But uh, they're now uh, blessed by God. We see that the preachers, only preacher Gomer didn't... Uh, he looks, st still looks young, you know, compared to that picture till now, he looks almost the same. Uh, us, uh, we are now so fat. We know how Preacher Wilson changed. Uh, just look at his head. <laughs> Very big change. For, uh, but uh, we're just looking at that picture, we praise the Lord because of uh, the memories, because of all that he has done. Our pastor is right. Uh, there's so many things that we have gone through. Uh, and then... Uh, that's why I believe that the best uh, anniversary speakers are people of the church as well, preachers or, or, or a pastor, because they know, we know uh, by the grace of God what people need. And uh, I, I'm not against people coming over to preach, I guess, because they have, been a they have been a blessing to us, of course. But uh, they, uh, they have really uh, only a few ideas of what we have gone through. Hopefully the message today will encourage us po, uh, to have this turning point uh, for the better for our for our Lord Jesus Christ and uh, we're going to be at two uh, just like yesterday we're going to be in uh, two places in the scriptures uh, we'll be at Mark chapter 8 and then we'll jump to Luke chapter 9 uh, and we'll end up uh, again back uh, to Mark chapter 8 and uh, also thank you for the kids who sang that song that is the principle by which I will live by while preaching this uh, have patience, don't be in such a hurry. Okay, Paul? So let's remember, have patience, don't be in such a hurry, and uh, don't think about the food later. Just think about it uh, later so that we can be patient and not be in a hurry. So let's all stand, let's open our Bibles in Mark, Mark, Mark chapter 8, verse 27, and we'll read up to verse number 38. After that, we'll jump to Luke chapter 9, verse 57 and uh, up until verse number 62. So Mark 8, 27 to 38, Luke 9, 57 to 62. Let's read this responsibly. Mark 8, 27 says, And Jesus went out and his disciples into the towns of Caesarea, Philippi. 
And by the way, he asked his disciples, saying unto them, Whom do men say that I am? And he saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Peter answereth and said unto him, Thou art the Christ. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he spake that same openly and Peter took him and began to rebuke him. But when he had turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. And when he called the people unto him, and his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake, and the Gospels, the same shall save it. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of being also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the Holy Angels. Luke 9 57 And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto me, Pass the sandals, and where is the ear of the nest? For the Son of Man had not where to lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. And the Lord and another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. Stand to the plow and looking back for the kingdom of God. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you, Lord, for this wonderful uh, event. A celebration, Lord, of your faithfulness throughout the years, uh, really just uh, throughout this past year, your faithfulness to us. And uh, though the world uh, is reeling, Lord, from uh, situations, but you have remained faithful yes. and you have uh, always proven that you're faithful and will always be faithful, dear Lord. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for this celebration. We thank you, Lord, for members who are here to celebrate, even our friends who are here to celebrate with us. Uh, recognizing the uh, this event we thank you for that we pray lord that you use this uh time that we have uh to study your word we use this uh message dear lord as a way to challenge each and every one that though we are already following you though we're already here serving you and uh, being uh, faithful to you that we can always uh, abound in your work that yes. we can always uh there are always corners that we can turn uh in order to be a, a better uh, servant, dear Lord, better uh, uh, member of IBCSR. I pray, Lord, that you use this uh, message. Use me, dear Lord, uh, uh, to be a blessing. And, uh, you know, Lord, uh, just by myself, I, I can never say anything behind this pulpit that will be a blessing to people. But I pray, Lord, that you, the Holy Spirit, will, will talk to each and everyone, will challenge each and everyone, dear Lord, through these verses, through the Word of God. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will work and that we will be able to magnify your name, glorify your name uh, this morning. After everything said and done, I pray, Lord, that you give us a humble heart to submit to the things that you are going to work on, on our hearts. For all these things, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So our theme um, turning point is a challenge for us. Uh, we all know that the, the meaning of that is just a challenge for us to turn uh, a corner, just to uh, maybe turn around or, or go back to the uh, ways that uh, the, the Lord has uh, given to us. But our, the verse that we have read doesn't only challenge us to turn a corner or to have that turning point, but to have that turning point towards 
our Lord Jesus Christ. To, to have that turning point, uh, to have that decision, make that decision, just like uh, uh, the, the verses we have read, to make the decision to really follow Christ. And the title of the message this morning is not turning point, but we have that, uh, that is already given. But the title is Following Christ. Following our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm not saying or preaching here because we're not following Christ. I do believe that we are trying our best, doing our best by the grace of God uh, to follow Christ. I know, I know that most of us here, uh, especially those who come here really for missions, really for the work of God, have sacrificed so much. And I'm not, uh, uh, what do you call this, I'm not disregarding that fact. I know the sacrifices each and every one is making for the Lord. I know the time that we spend uh, in the Word of God, we spend ministering to each other, uh, praying for each other, loving one another. So I'm not preaching today because I'm saying that you're not following Christ. And uh, I, I know that just by being here this morning, you're already at least sacrificing a little bit of your reputation. We know that uh, what uh, many people uh, uh, have this negative opinion of our church, and being a member of the church, of course, uh, that affects you as well. And maybe some of us are at odds with even our own relatives because of the situation of our church and because of the things that God has, has led us through. But the reason why I'm preaching this is I do believe that just like last night, we can always abound, always abound in the work of the Lord. We can always do more. We can always serve more. We can always love each other more. We can always give more. We can always uh, serve the Lord in a larger capacity. And though we are already doing so much for the Lord, by the grace of God, we can do so much more this coming year. We can do so much more for the Lord. And I hope that the message today will challenge us to do more. Because though we are already doing what God has called us to do, I do believe that somehow we are still holding back. Somehow there are still things that are holding us back. Somehow there are still things that are uh, uh, stopping us from doing what really the Lord wants us to do. And uh, from the message on Wednesday, yesterday, and today, I do believe that God is calling each and every one of us for a greater serving capacity. It doesn't matter what that is. I'm not only talking to, to men today to, for, for God to challenge you to, uh, to preach more or to be a missionary or to, do, or to do great work. I'm talking to everyone today. I'm talking to the matured believer. Though you're already a long time believer and you have done so much for Christ, as long as you're still alive, God wants you to do more for Him. I'm talking even to the pastor or the deacons of this church. Uh, and though we are, have been uh, faithfully, by the grace of God, preaching the Word of God, God wants us to do so much more for Him, to be deeper in the Word, to know much more about God, to have a better relationship with Him so that we can be more of a blessing to the members who are listening to the preaching. I'm talking even to the people who are, who are doing uh, music ministry. You can do more. You know how uh, you can improve the gift that God has given you. You can give so much more time and effort in doing that so that you will be better for the Lord. I'm talking to members today who may be uh, doing, who, who have been doing their part but again you can be more involved in the ministry if you don't have uh, uh, an outreach that you go to maybe the Lord is talking to you today to help out in our outreaches if you if you're not uh, uh, giving that much or you can still have that uh, uh, more capability to give for the ministry to give for missions maybe the Lord today will talk to you and say you have to give more you have to be more of a blessing financially because I have given you the capability. Maybe the Lord is calling us to a more faithful church attendance. And, and, and no matter what your situation is today, I hope this message will, will, will just uh, challenge you to turn that corner and just decide, Lord, I'm going to do more for you. And maybe today there are some who have not turned that corner to really just... Uh, accept Christ, repent of their sins, and accept Christ as their Lord and Savior. Maybe the Holy Spirit has been pricking your heart, knocking on the door of your heart and saying, you have to repent. You have to repent of what you previously believed, uh, of, of your good works, of your tradition, of your religion, and just place your faith wholly on the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe you have been here attending for a long time, and you're still not, you haven't still made that decision. Maybe today the Lord will help you turn that corner and make that decision and give your life for Him. I hope that will be uh, uh, th th this message will accomplish those things. And let us open our hearts, let us open our minds in order for the Lord to work for us 
uh, for us this morning. And I do believe that problems that we have had in a church uh, always comes from people who are not fully following our Lord Jesus Christ. And if today you are one of the, and if today you realize that maybe I'm that man, I'm that man who's still not a hundred percent buying into uh, the unity of this church. I'm that guy who's still not one hundred percent agreeing with what the church wants. Then I pray that the Lord will speak to you this morning as well, because we have re- we have realized not only in this church but even in the previous days, other churches as well were attacked by the devil, and 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 all of these attacks came from people, members of the local church, who we think we could have trusted, who they thought they could have uh, um, uh, 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 what they call this a partner for them in the ministry but instead they attacked the, 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 uh, the church they made the ch- uh, their, their causing churches to be divided and even one person only one person we, uh, our pastor talked about that yesterday only one person can destroy a local congregation if we're not careful uh, just because of Achan you know what happened to uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, to Joshua and the men just because of Jonah all of those other uh, people on that ship could have died that night that, that, that time so that's why I want to challenge us today if we're not that haven't turned that corner in following the Lord Jesus Christ I hope that we will uh, do that today so we we'll started mark chapter 8 verse 27 what we're really going to talk about this morning are some things that may be hindering us from turning that corner some things that may be hindering us from fully following the lord jesus christ and i have made myself clear i'm not saying you're not following all i'm saying is that you maybe we're still holding back the bible says in verse 27 to 28 of mark chapter 8 and jesus went out and his disciples into the towns of caesarea philippi so this time christ of uh, popularity is growing already so people already have heard about him people already have heard about what he does uh, maybe do not know who he is but they know that this guy is something else right so and by the way he asked his disciples saying unto them whom do men say that i am so what do those people you, you you go around you hear people talking when they're talking about me what do they say who am i so these people answered and said some of them say that you're john the baptist no doubt a great man man of god the man who prepared the way of the lord jesus christ but some say elias and others one of the prophets so all of these uh, answers are great men john the baptist the prophets elias all of these are great men but all of them all of these answers were wrong all of these answers, all of these great men that they, they mentioned, they thought uh, uh, who Jesus Christ was, only point to the Messiah himself. So they don't know his identity. They don't know who he is. So maybe you're that person this morning. Maybe you haven't turned that corner. Maybe you haven't really followed the Lord Jesus Christ fully because you don't know who he is. Because we don't know who he is. And I'm talking to those who don't have, still may not be saved today. Maybe you don't know who really God is. Maybe you think he's just one of the, uh, of the great men of history. Maybe you think he's one of those uh, people who can predict the future, who has done great things, definitely. He knows the future, definitely. He has done great things. But Christ is so much more than that. Yeah. Our Lord Jesus Christ is so much more than that. Just this morning, I was talking to Panlu, and he said that he was talking to another Kamai pastor. I don't know where he is, but that Kamai pastor, uh, though he is... Uh, um, he has studied the Bible. He doesn't believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. He doesn't believe on the Trinity. He doesn't believe that the deity of our Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe you are one of the, that person. We have learned that so much in going to the villages. People will readily accept Christ. You ask them to pray, they pray. You ask them to accept Christ, they accept Christ. You ask them to repent, they say they repented. But they accept Christ as one of their gods. They accept Christ as one of those uh, uh, gods that they worship. And they have the mistaken identity of who Christ is. They don't realize that Christ is the only Savior. And God is the only one true God. And until and unless you realize that, you can never really be saved. And maybe you're that this morning. Maybe the Lord is knocking on the door of your heart to repent of that belief and just place your faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. These people, they don't know Christ. They don't know Christ. Maybe uh, maybe they they, they have that idea, but they don't really uh, uh, know exactly who Christ was. 
Verse number 29, what was Peter's answer? And he said unto them, But whom ye say that I am? So, so all right, so this, that's what people have been talking uh, about. Now, what about you? You who have been closer to me, you who have been following me, you have been uh, hearing all my preachings and seeing all the things that I'm doing, who do you say that I am? And Peter answered, said unto him, Thou art the Christ. Which is the right answer? You are the Savior. You are the Messiah. And these people know exactly who Messiah was. They know him. They know the scriptures. They know the Old Testament. They know someone is coming uh, as a Messiah. And Peter knows it is this man. It is Christ. And Christ is not only a great leader. Christ is not only a prophet. Christ is not only those things. Christ is the all-powerful, uh, uh, omnipotent, omniscient, and, and a sovereign God. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 1, 8, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. That is who he is. Now, Peter knows he's Messiah. Peter knows he is the Savior. Peter knows that he is the one who will save mankind from their sins. But later on, we're going to see where, uh, what, Peter, what Peter doesn't know. Now, if you're that this morning, you don't know who Christ is, maybe that's the reason why you haven't really given all your best to Him. Because if we don't know that Christ is sovereign, that He's all-powerful, why would I trust Him with my life? Why? Does it make sense to trust someone with all your decisions? Someone who's just as limited as I am? I will not do that. But when you know that Christ's power is limitless, when we know that uh, He knows uh, from the beginning, uh, eternity to eternity, when he knows that we know that uh, uh, His plans for, uh, for us is to glorify Him, then it's going to be easier for us to give our life for Him, to, to just, to just uh, trust Him with every decision. So maybe, I don't know if you're in that position today, if you're not saved today, I hope that you turn that corner and, and, and accept that Christ really is the, God is the, we have only uh, one true God, and Christ is the only Savior. Not your tradition, not your good works, not your, your intelligence, not all of those, not going to the temple, not all of those things. It is only Christ. Amen. It is only Him. Maybe uh, just like these people, maybe you're there. Verse number 30 says, And he charged them that they should tell no man of him. That doesn't make any sense. Right? So, so, so Christ turned to Peter, uh, turned to his disciples and said, Who do you th uh, say that I am? Peter answered the correct answer. Oh, you're the Christ. Right? You're, you're right, Peter. In, in, in other parallel verses, you are, you're right, Peter. Christ said, But don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. Keep it to yourselves for now. Does it make sense? Well, we have been challenged yesterday, throughout the whole day, to be witnesses for Christ. And, and, and one would think that Christ would say, all right, go around, tell everyone they're wrong, tell everyone I'm the Messiah. But Christ didn't say that. Christ said, tell no man of me. Why? Because we're going to see in the next verses, he's going to correct their perspective about the Messiah. He's going to correct him. Because all of this time, these people think, that okay, all right, Peter was right, he's the Messiah, but in his mind, he's the Messiah that would free them right there of the, uh, of the Roman uh, oppression, that would free the people of Israel, that would really uh, usher in the kingdom of God, that will rule the world. That's why we remember that the, uh, the mother of, uh, who's that disciple, James, went to Christ and said, oh, when, when you're there already, when you're already reigning, don't forget my son, to be on your right hand, my other son to be on your left hand. Don't forget that. So maybe these people are following him, and, I, and I'm sure that these people are following even Peter himself, because he thinks that one day this guy is going to reign, this guy is gaining popularity, he's the Messiah is going to save us. But they don't know Christ's purpose during this time, during, uh, during why he came uh, uh, to earth during that time. So maybe we are that person today. Maybe we, don't, we do know Christ. But we don't know his purpose. We don't know his purpose. Maybe the reason why we haven't turned that corner is we really don't know his purpose. 
Maybe you're that one, or you're one of uh, uh, those people who are listening to the Joel Austins of this world who thinks that Christ's purpose for me is to be rich. Christ's purpose for me is to live comfortably. Christ's purpose for me is to just give me an abundant life here on earth. And if that is our thinking of Christ, all we're going to do is enrich ourselves. All we're going to do is work. All we're going to do is make, make ourselves intelligent. And just all of those are temporary things in this world. Maybe you're that man today. Maybe you have the mistaken, uh, uh, maybe you know who Christ is, but maybe you don't know his purpose really for your life. We, I don't know where we got that kind of thinking that Christ's will is for us to be rich. No, Christ's will for, for John the Baptist and Paul was to be beheaded. Christ's will for Peter was to be crucified upside down. Who do you think you are thinking that Christ's will is for me to be a millionaire? Maybe that is God's will for you, sure. But I, don't think, but, but, but I think that's not uh, very likely. You know, sometimes God blesses financially, but, some, but most of the time He doesn't. He just wants us to live a life that will glorify Him, live a life that will not trust in riches, live a life that will continue to serve Him. But like these people, like Peter, he doesn't know really uh, what Christ's purpose was. So he had the right answer. He knows the right identity, but he doesn't know his uh, um, uh, purpose. That's why Christ said, all right, don't tell anyone else yet because I'm going to teach you. I'm going to tell you that I am the Messiah, but, you're not, but, you're, uh, but you have the uh, mistaken what I'm going to do right now. Verse number 31 says here, and he began to teach them that the Son of Man, me, the Messiah, must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again and he spake that um, uh, uh, saying openly and what did Peter do? took him aside and began to rebuke him if you read uh, the other uh, parallel verses Peter actually encouraged him ah don't worry Lord we're here not gonna let that happen to you uh, we know who Peter uh, what Peter's attitude is don't worry, uh, don't be saying those things. These are discouraging things. Uh, we know that you're here to save us, to, to, to prosper us, to make us have a good life. Well, don't say those suffering. Don't, don't talk about dying. Don't talk about being rejected. We're here. We're, we can protect you. We can protect you right here. So, so they have this wrong uh, idea of the purpose of, of Peter. Actually, they were so focused on the rejecting they were so focused on the suffering they were so focused on the killing the Christ being killed that Peter missed that high note that the that, that Christ ended his teaching after three days I will rise again yeah. You know, Christ did say a lot of things that are hard to hear, but he ended his message on a high note I will die but I will rise again but Peter miss, didn't think about that oh, Lord Lord don't say those things those are not the things that I want to hear. That is not your purpose here. We don't think that's your purpose. And I, and I don't know about you, but because we have the perspective already, we can already see the Bible, already know, uh, God has already revealed all these things to us. I don't know about you, but that makes me happy. Why? Because Christ said, I am going to die for your sins. I'm going to rise again. And the Bible says here that when Christ preached this, he preached that the Son of Man must must why must he do that why because if he doesn't do that we don't have our salvation today if he doesn't suffer die and rise again we don't have this hope that we are going to rise again someday we don't have this hope that we're going to be together with him someday and they missed that point Peter misses that point and eventually in their lives they're going to realize that and God is going to use them greatly but maybe we're there in that point of our lives that we know Christ we are saved but we don't know what he wants us to do we don't know what his purpose is para sa atin. and Christ didn't uh, uh, call these disciples in order for, uh, for them to reign with him right there but he called them to suffer with him and we know how much how much th things they suffered in their lives Peter was crucified upside down that was my will for you, Peter. You, you missed that point. You're missing that. You're going to die an agonizing death. So we, we miss that. And, and reading the Bible, if you have read the Bible through and through, read the New Testament again and again, you can never get the idea that God wants you to be rich. No idea. I don't know where, how the prosperity gospel preachers 
twist the scripture in order to make people believe that uh, you are loved, you are blessed, you are rich, you are intelligent. They may be, but the Lord's purpose for us is to suffer with Him and to, to glorify Him in our sufferings. All right, so maybe we're, you're not in that position. Maybe you know who Christ is. Maybe we know His purpose, but maybe like Peter, we, don't, we just don't accept it. We just don't accept that, Lord. You, you say that if the Son of Man suffered, how much more His disciples, they're, they're also going to suffer? That means, Lord, you don't want me to be rich? That means you don't want me to do this? This, this is my plan, Lord? This is not your plan for me? I just don't accept that. Lord, I'm happy you saved me. Lord, I'm happy I'm saved someday when I get to heaven. Don't worry, I'll glorify you or serve you for, for eternity. But Lord, just let me enjoy my life for now, please. Maybe we, we do know who He is. We know His purpose is for us to glorify Him here, even if that means suffering. But maybe we just, just don't accept that. I just, I just can't accept that. I just can't accept that we're not here just to enjoy my life. I just can't accept that I'm not here. Maybe the Lord doesn't want me to be rich. I don't want that for my life. Maybe the Lord doesn't want me to be comfortable. I don't want that. Lord, I'm saved. Lord, I'm going to heaven. But Lord, please enjoy, let me enjoy my life here. Maybe you're, you, the reason why we haven't turned that corner is because we don't want that for ourselves. We don't want Christ's purpose. We don't want His will and all these things. Mark 8.33 uh, next verse, but when he had turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get thee behind me, Satan. Now, Peter was not really Satan, we know that. But what he's doing is satanic. You know, you, do you realize what Peter is saying? We do realize it now, but Peter doesn't know that for sure. Do you re realize that Peter is telling him, You don't have to die on the cross, you don't have to be buried, you don't have to be risen again. If he doesn't have to do that, how else can we be saved? So that kind, of thing, that kind of thing is satanic in itself. That's why today, people who, who reject the, the gospel, people who reject the dying of the, uh, 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 the cross of Christ, people who reject the power of the blood of Christ, that, those are satanic teachings. People who reject the deity of Christ, those are satanic teachings. Don't get thee behind me, Satan. Now, Peter understands that uh, 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 completely because they already, uh, they already know uh, that... that um, Christ said this before when he told the devil, get thee behind me. Uh, when, when, when he was being, uh, uh, what do you call this, uh, tempted. For thou savest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. So the, re the, the word savest here means to perceive or to understand. Now stop what you're doing, Peter. Just, 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 just stop what you're saying. You don't understand my purpose. You don't understand. You're only looking at things in your own perspective. Now, you're going to understand it someday. Verse number 34. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples, also said unto them, here's the great teaching, whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So maybe another reason why we haven't turned that corner is simply because we don't want to deny ourselves. You know, denying ourselves here is so much more than occasionally saying no to what you want. It's so much more than occasionally saying no to that uh, ice cream that you have been craving for. Or occasionally saying no to that thing that you wanted. Oh, I said no to that. Lord, I am really following you. I have denied myself. No. The, the word, the, the denying ourselves is me forgetting your own ambitions, forgetting your own self, forgetting your future, forgetting your plans, and just telling Lord, Lord, tell me what you want me to do. It means forgetting yourself. Take yourself out of the picture. You're crucified with Christ. It's not you who live. It is Christ that now lives in you. So forget that. The, uh, John the Baptist says, he must increase and I must decrease. So that means if you want to, re if the reason, maybe the reason why we haven't given that full surrender to God is, Lord, I don't want to deny myself. I want to deny myself of some of these things, but Lord, I'm reserving some things for me. And though this, are, this is holding me back from the things that you want me to do, Lord, just please let me have this one. And, you know, uh, if we're not just really just going to wholly follow the Lord, we're just wasting the other part of our lives that we're following our Lord in. Sayang na lang din, hindi na rin naman pagpapalain ng Panginoon. And we can see that this is the very first step to deny yourself. Realize that you can never really say yes to God until you say no to the things that may hold you back. 
Never really do that. So I don't know if you are, you are, you're in that position today, but you, you really cannot deny yourself. Lord, I just can't accept the fact that you gave me this life, but you don't want me to live this life the way I want to. That you gave me this life, but you want to tell me what to do. I just can't accept that fact. And if you don't have that kind of attitude, why in the world did you surrender uh, 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 your, your, your eternity to Christ if you cannot surrender the, how many years you're going to live here on earth? So deny yourself. Maybe because the reason why you're not turning that corner is you can't deny yourself. Denying ourselves also means that we have to deny ourselves of the pleasures of this world. Especially sinful ones. And until and unless we have denied ourselves of this pleasure that the devil is offering us day in and day out, we can never truly say, yes, Lord, I will follow you fully. The Bible says, Hebrews 12, 1, Wherefore, seeing we are also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. We can never truly run that race fully for the Lord without stumbling unless we lay aside even the pleasures that are sinful in life. Denying ourselves, not only that, maybe we are in that position that we don't want to take up our cross, meaning we love our life too much. Love my life. Now, the disciples here, when we read this verse, they don't know yet that Christ is going to die on the cross. They have no idea. But they do know what the cross means. When, you, when, when Christ said, take up your cross, that means you're probably going to die. Probably. And they did die. Uh, no, you're probably going to die a horrible death. And dying on the cross during that time, they know because you're a guilty man, you're sinful, that's why you, uh, you deserve uh, that kind of penalty. And maybe because we just love our life too much. I don't know if any one of us here can say, I am willing to follow Christ, even if it means giving up my own life. And we don't, we don't really see that kind of discipleship today anymore. We don't really see that kind of following hard after Christ anymore. That I am willing to die for you. Easy to say, but, I, but because of that, uh, over time today, no one's really killing uh, uh, the, we don't have this kind of um, uh, persecution anymore that we cannot really we can, maybe we can imagine that I, I can give my life for Christ but until and unless we're in that position I, I don't know and, uh, if you see that cross if you see those nails already that hammer I don't know if you're still going to go through for the Lord but maybe the reason why we haven't turned that corner for God is we, we love our life too much love our life too much and we don't realize that this life is temporary the bible says it's just like a vapor it's here now it's gone tomorrow and the only the lord is the one who gave you that life and he wants you to use that to uh, to glorify him and if it means uh, uh, for us to give up that life for him then why not anyway we're going to spend eternity with him that is the kind of life paul is living he says that i i my life is in danger every time and i don't care because if i die i'm going to be with the lord and and i and i can and willingly give my life for him let's jump to luke chapter 9 verse number 57 to 62 and this uh we can uh, the reason why i go to go to this chapter is to just look at more things that may be hindering us from turning that corner and it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. That's a great statement. So someone came to Christ and said, Lord, wherever you go, I'm going to follow you. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, birds of the air have their nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead. But go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another said unto, and I also said, Lord, I will follow thee. But let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Really odd answers the Christ is giving here. And I just want to, uh, to make one thing clear here, that the way Christ himself answered these people and approached them is not for us to do. Because I don't think, if, if, if we give our invitation later, and someone will come here, get the mic, and say, Church, I have decided to be a missionary. No one would say, ah, think twice, foxes have holes, ah, you're going to be poor, 
Uh, you have to think about that decision. Don't follow Christ. Don't do that. No one's going to do that. But Christ did that. And Christ can do that because He alone knows the intents of the heart. That's why don't read too much into that. Uh, uh, because the only reason why Christ was able to do that because He knows really what's in their hearts. He knows really that these people are not really following me. And He knows that they have their own reservations. And they, He knows that these reservations will eventually uh, lead them to backslide anyway. Right, so Christ knows the heart. That's why He can answer these things. It's not for us to copy that. We don't know the intents of the hearts of the people. Right? Now, Christ is in a position to say that. But let's look at them one by one. The first man, he, did, he said something great. Lord, wherever you go, I'm going to follow you. But Christ says, foxes, these animals, they have places to stay, but I don't have a place to stay. So maybe, and I'm sure that this man, upon hearing that, just turned around and walked away. He didn't follow because this man, maybe you're like this man who has a security issue. Maybe we do know Christ, we know his purpose, we, want to, we already have the desire just like this guy, I want to follow you Christ, but I don't really think that you can take care of me. I don't really think that you can provide for my family. I don't really think that you can provide for my needs. Maybe if I follow you, I don't have that nice place to stay anymore. Maybe if I follow you Christ, I will not uh, uh, have that dream house that I wanted to stay in for long, uh, uh, ever, since, uh, ever since I can remember. So maybe that is you today. I have a security issue. I don't really trust the providence of God. I don't really trust God's power to provide for my needs. Yes, I'm going to follow you, Lord, but just, help, let, just let me take care of my finances, my family. And then all of these things are good. All of these things that these people have, uh, all of, the, of, all of their uh, concerns were legitimate concerns. Oh, none of us here wants to live on the streets. Does anyone here want to live on the street? No? That is a legitimate concern. I want to take care of myself. I want to make sure that my family has a place to go home to at night. The other man says, uh, I want to just uh, really uh, serve my father, just really uh, bury him. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't think if anyone of us here will, will, uh, will have a loved one who dies and we go to the funeral, uh, I don't think that anyone would be rebuked for that. There's nothing wrong with that. One says, I'm going to say goodbye to my, to, my, to my family. Nothing wrong with that. But God knows that these things are just uh, 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 on the surface. There's a deeper reason for them. Maybe this first guy, maybe his, his reason was a security issue. No, uh, the Lord cannot take care of me. Oh, uh, Ganun ba? Ay, wag na lang po. Parang ganun. Is that so, Lord? We're not, we're not gonna have a place to stay? Oh, okay, I don't want to follow you anymore. Uh, is, that, is that how shallow our desire is to follow Christ? Maybe that guy, we, you know, the Lord already promised us to supply for our needs. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Matthew chapter 6 says, Wherefore, if God so cloth the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow the gone, sh shall he not much more clothe he, O ye of little faith? Now, do, you ha you, do you not have that faith that Christ or God can provide for your needs? Maybe the reason why you're still holding back is because of financial reasons. Maybe the reason why you're still holding back is you're just saying that, Lord, I don't think you can provide for me. Verse number 59, uh, the next one says, And he said unto another, follow me. But he said, Lord, okay, I'm going to follow you, but first let me go and bury my father. He said unto him, let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom. We have heard many explanations about this. You know, some preachers say that uh, his father may not be dead yet. Maybe more years before he dies. So his, his priority is not really Christ and all these things. Maybe his father is ill during this time. He needs to take care of his father, which is something that is good to do. But we don't know. And we don't know why. The, the Bible didn't uh, uh, tell us why. But I want us to look at this one possibility. That he is still under the authority of his father. Uh, during this time, we know the, author the, the responsibility of uh, sons to their parents. Uh, they have to be the ones to take care of them. Uh, I don't know if it's, uh, it happens a lot today. He has to, maybe, maybe his reason is that I just want my father to die first. Because I cannot follow you as long as I'm still under his authority. So maybe our issue is an authority issue. 
Maybe the reason why we're not following Christ is because someone, we, we see a person in our lives who has a higher authority than Christ sa ating buhay. Can be your wife. Hope it's not. Can be your parents. And that is very common in this country. There are, peop- there are people that we know. You know, remember, what's this girl's name? She has been attending for, for so long. She's been part of our, ano, dito siya natira. Line, a line, line. Her name is Line. She has been faithful, been with us for many years. But then, she wa- she, I know she wants to follow Christ. But during the time that her father is about to die, made her promise that she will stop coming to church. We never saw her again. Never again. And though he has that desire. And a lot of times it happens here in, the, in, this, in this, this country of Cambodia. And I'm sure that uh, uh, even uh, Brother Matthew has exper- uh, or maybe will experience that. A person who really wants to follow the Lord, but you know, in this culture, we have to follow our parents. So wait, let, me, let my parents, when they die, then I'm going to follow you. So maybe that's your issue today. Maybe authority, maybe I, I don't want my parents to get mad at me. I don't want my dad to get mad at me. I don't want them to be disappointed at me. They put me through school. Now, they are poor right now. I'm their only hope out of poverty. I'm not going to give up my life to God. I'm, I'm, I'm still going to attend church. I'm still going to do Bible study. But I'm just not going to follow Christ wholly. Maybe you're there. Maybe that's you today. And any authority figure may be stopping you from doing that. I hope for the man it's not your wives. It's not our wives. Because if that's the case, <laughs> you have a different problem. <laughs> I hope it's not that. I hope for the wives it's not your husband that's stopping you from there. Maybe you're, you're, you're looking at... Uh, <laughs> I may be in trouble here. Uh, maybe, you're looking, maybe you're looking at these people as someone who has a higher authority than God. Until and unless we see God's authority as higher than any person uh, 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 human authority in our life we can never truly follow God That's right. maybe it's even the government it's stopping us there are many churches in China despite uh, the government uh, uh, bans they still follow Christ that means they recognize Christ's authority above the government yeah. and maybe it's an authority issue for us Maybe it is. I don't know. Six, verse number uh, uh, six, uh, 61. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell. And shall at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is a hard point. Maybe it's our human relationships that is stopping us from doing that. That's why it's very important not to have an unbeliever uh, uh, as your girlfriend or boyfriend. That's why I'm telling Ponlu, not unbeliever. They will not allow you to study Bible school, Ponlu. Right? And, 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 and I'm not, and although there are many cases already of having unbelieving spouses got saved because of their spouse's testimony, praise the Lord for that. But you know, sometimes it's just really our closest relationships that stops us from really following the Lord wholly. I'm so blessed to be born in a family who loves the Lord. And I, I, and I don't, I cannot really relate experientially to this. Why? Because I, I, I can't remember a time when my parents have stopped me from, from, from fulfilling my desire to serve the Lord. They have actually stopped, uh, uh, corrected me whenever I have the desire that it will, 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 will uh, uh, pull me away from the will of God and just bring me back to the, to, to the will of God. I'm so blessed. But maybe you're not as blessed as me in that kind of situation. Maybe you have that relationship that's stopping you. Uh, most of the time, if we're not careful, it is our own families that the devil will use in order for us not to follow the Lord. If we're not careful, it can even be your daughter. It can even be your son. I remember uh, uh, my, our choir director in the Philippines when I was studying in the Bible school. His name is uh, Sir Kenneth Gomez. When I was there, when I got there, he was single. After a year, he got married. And then, you know, Filipinos, you, you get married and every year you get uh, kids. So he got his kid uh, uh, very, uh, uh, very uh, uh, soon. But what I really admire about him is he never gave up any of his ministries. Despite having to take care of her, his wife, his uh, newborn son, and living far away from the church. Still, earliest 
uh, every service. He's still doing, uh, he's still the choir director. He's still having all these Bible studies. Even up until 11, uh, 11 at night, uh, he brings me to all his Bible studies. He never really let having uh, more responsibilities for his family affect his service for the Lord. And that is a hard thing to do. Re I realize that now. It's a hard thing to do because what's wrong with taking care of my wife and my kid? I have to take care of them. They're my ministry. But we also have to realize that maybe the Lord gave us that so that we will have more uh, uh, resolve into doing uh, what we have been doing for God despite our added responsibilities. Maybe it's that. There's nothing wrong with this guy going back and saying goodbye to his parents. But the Lord knows that deep inside, it's not just saying goodbye to them. They're going to hold you back someday. That's why I, I understand uh, uh, why we don't uh, let Penlu always go back home. Why? Because there's nothing wrong with look, uh, 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 checking on your mom if she's healthy or not, if she needs something. But if we keep on doing that, maybe the devil will use them in order to pull us away from the church. Yeah. And that is very much possible. I have so many uh, uh, Bible school uh, classmates who, who, who stopped, who didn't graduate because of that. Because they need to work, because they need to provide, because they need to do this. Their mom got sick, their gra grandmother got sick, they have to quit Bible school, and then eventually find themselves not in the ministry anymore. So maybe it's a relationship issue for us. And it's funny that two, of, two out of three of these people, their problem is their closest relationships in their life. Our kids are a blessing. Our, our spouse's blessing. But if we are not we don't have that proper perspective and we don't realize that God is still more important than them, then they will be some people, uh, they will be the reason why we're holding back on God. And uh, that is really a message uh, that I fully understand now that, ha that I have a, a wife and a daughter. And the Bible says in, uh, uh, remember when Christ says that whosoever will come after me and not hate his mother, not hate his father, is not worthy of me. It means that if you love someone, a human relationship, more than you love God, you can never truly follow him. Yeah. Never really truly follow him. That is a heart issue, and you, only you know about that. Go back to Mark chapter 8. We'll end our, our uh, uh, message here. Verse 35 to 37. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels. The same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? So Christ, having corrected them about uh, his identity, about his purpose, having uh, issued to them the invitation to deny yourself, take up your cross, follow me, he gives them the reason why. Verse number 35, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels the same shall save it this verse is always used as a salvation uh, verse but this verse is really about service to god whosoever will live your life for the sake of yourself you're going to miss out yeah. We're going to miss out. We have studied that uh, eternity principle yesterday, even on Wednesday, even the other preachers preach about that. That if we live our lives spending, investing on the things that, of, that are of this world, we're going to be living a wasted kind of life. That's why, Brother Pulu, it's not a waste that you surrender your life to God. Because that is what matters in eternity. Yes, you, make, you can get a degree, you can get a certificate, you may be rich someday, but after that, when you face Christ, that does not matter Amen. at all. That's why giving your life, living your life in service to the Lord for the gospel's sake, for the ministry's sake, for the brethren's sake, for other people, for your love for God, for your love for each other, that is a life that is worth living. Amen. And if we don't live that kind of life, we don't fully follow God, Christ is basically saying you just wasted everything. Wasted your life. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? This is what matters, uh, uh, brethren. This is what matters. Are we living our lives for God? Again, I'm not saying you're not following Christ. I don't know what is your turning point. But, but I had uh, at least for in the past a month or so, I had that turning point and the Lord just made me realize that, okay, you claim to be, called uh, you're called by me to preach 
You're called by me to be a messenger of the Bible. Don't you realize that you're spending too little time in the Word of God? That's the God's message to me. And, 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 and for a long time, I've been using uh, in my mind, in myself, that's just me conflict, uh, conflicting in myself, I'm using my wife and daughter as an excuse not to really spend more time in the Bible. I've been using them as an excuse. There's nothing wrong with spending time, a lot of time with them. Spend a lot, I really spend a lot of time with them. But I can, I can uh, uh, watch basketball less and spend, the, uh, spend it in the Word of God. Maybe your turning point today is just simply being, uh, spending more time in the Word of God. Maybe that's it. Maybe just reading the Bible. Maybe it's just praying more. Maybe it's just giving more. Maybe it's just serving in a great capacity. But whatever that is, I hope and I pray that all of us will be united in this. That after today, I'm going to turn a corner and we will really allow God to tell me what else He wants me to do. I'm already following, but I know I'm still holding back. Because of this, because of that, only you know. But let us surrender that to the Lord. And this is an individual thing. I'm not going to dictate to you the decision that you're going to make. It's an individual thing. But one thing is for sure. God is calling you and me to a greater serving capacity. To a greater ministry. Not saying you have to go to other provinces and start a work. Maybe that's not it. You know what that is. And let us just say today, Lord, I'm going to follow you. I will not allow these things to hinder me. I'm going to surrender these things to you. I'm going to turn that corner and I'm going to uh, glorify you more in my life. Let us all stand and let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for.